If you remember over-the-top special moves, elaborate stadiums, and Chad Ludo Bagman, then you grew up playing Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup. So a few months ago, I did a video ranking the best Harry Potter games, and the one comment I kept seeing again and again and again was that I was missing Quidditch World Cup. Now that poll was just for movie time games, but so many people were adamant that this was the best Harry Potter game that I felt compelled to make this video to try and figure out if the Quidditch World Cup really is the best Harry Potter game ever. And let's be honest, it's got pretty stiff competition. I mean, it's going up against Wizard Sniper Elite and Hogwarts Walking Simulator 2007. All right, so let's get straight into it. The game starts with Harry asking which house you want to join. Okay, Harry, but can you get your Nimbus out of my face? Oh, it's Wood. Say the thing, Wood. Quidditch is easy enough to understand. Uh, they kind of did wood a bit dirty in this one by giving him this huge forehead. Still, I prefer this wood to the demonic wood from the PlayStation 1 Chamber of Secrets game. So, time to choose your team. Look at Harry, he's like, pick me, I'm the main character. Also, I didn't realize MKBHD was in the Ravenclaw team. Okay, so next up we do these tutorials that get you familiarized with the game. Now, in the mainline games, Quidditch has always revolved around Harry catching the snitch. And this mechanic is still there and used to end the match, but the gameplay has been expanded. Most of the match will be spent passing and trying to score the Quaffle, with opportunities to use the Bludgers as homing missiles. I know some reviewers have criticized the controls, but I think they're pretty good for the most part. The developers went with a more arcade style sports game, think NBA Jam or Mario Strikers, but with brooms. Right, so I'm playing as Gryffindor and the first match is against Ravenclaw. All right, Harry, just try not to spit on yourself like the last time you saw Cho. At this point, the game is incredibly easy the Ravenclaw team practically hand you the Quaffle. I mean, this looks to be said during Harry's second year, so maybe they're all terrified he'll set the Basilisk on them. Every now and then you get a shot of Ron and Hermione celebrating, but for some reason Hermione looks like one of those nutcrackers. This being Quidditch, the game will only end when the Seeker catches the Snitch, and to trigger this, both teams have to build their Snitch bar at the top by passing the Quaffle and ranking up combos. Eventually, both halves will meet and engage in the chase sequence, which is quite similar to the movie games. Being being an arcade style sports game, Quidditch World Cup is a bunch of special moves and team special moves. Each of these look like a highly elaborate and incredibly brutal form of air ballet. Look at the poor Hufflepuffs bricking themselves. The Hogwarts grounds and the Quidditch pitch have been recycled from the Chamber of Secrets game, and the Hogwarts Cup itself acts as a tutorial. Once you beat the other three teams, you get the trophy from Dumbledore, two tickets to Harry Potter and the Cursed Child on West End, I mean uh, the World Cup, and you're off. And from this point on, Harry is relegated to being a spectator. I mean, look, it does make sense. You're not going to be getting a 12-year-old on the national team, even if he is the chosen one. At the same time, his name is on the box, so the game feels obliged to cut to him in the stands every now and then like, hey, remember, that's the main character featuring Big Forehead Wood. Okay, the World Cup. There are nine national teams to pick from, all playable from the start, well, except for Bulgaria. You need more wizard cards to play as Krum, who kind of looks like a Mortal Kombat villain. And speaking of which, this game's developers definitely worked hard to make the player designs um, stand out. My favourites include David Beckham from Wish playing for England, Lieutenant Serge, the electric gym leader playing for Germany, and hatless Fred Durst playing for Bulgaria. The gameplay in the World Cup is the same as Hogwarts. More scoring points, more passing to fill the gauge, and more elaborate special moves. Like uh, the French team, for example. How is this possible? Oh, she's definitely on the steroid potion. And uh, speaking of roids, Ludo Bagman, everyone. I know they described him as quite a hench fella in the books, but this is ridiculous. He looks like four-time Mr. Olympia Jay Cutler. Anyway, back to the special moves. Each team has one and they're all comprised of elaborate set pieces of violence. And this game wasn't shy about leaning into the country stereotypes with some of these moves. Look, we've got the Japanese team using karate, Australian surfing, the Nordics skiing on ice. I'm surprised they didn't make the German team whip out a big sausage and use that to bat the bludgers. But my favorite special move belongs to the USA team, who just flat out turn into the Harlem Globetrotters. The World Cup consists of 18 games, and if you're top of the league at the end, you take on Bulgaria. Now, winning the cup unlocks Queer Ditch stage.
Stadium, which is supposed to be where the game of Quidditch was first invented. Uh, kind of looks like Shrek Swamp to me. And the uh, Queerditch Stadium is definitely the most underwhelming location because this game is filled with really cool stadiums, one for each of the playable countries, from castles to ice mountains to a massive koi pond in Japan. In terms of gameplay, Quidditch World Cup is very faithful to the rules outlined in the books, for better or worse, because, well, I'll say it, Quidditch is a convoluted game, mainly because it was created as a narrative device first and a sport second. That's why the seeker position is so different from the rest of the game. It was there to add some fast-paced action to Harry's story, which is why this game can feel a bit clunky when compared to other sports games. For example, catching the snitch ends the match, but it doesn't mean you win. The other team can still win if they have an overall higher score. Meanwhile, the snitch bar fills up the more you pass. So you can either try to balance passing and scoring, or just spam the score and hope you have enough points if you don't catch the snitch. Alternatively, if you're confident in your snitch game, you can just break the game by spamming the pass until the snitch bar is full, and then catch the snitch. Making poor Ludo Bagman really work for it. To be fair, this is harder to do on the higher difficulties, but still doable. Then again, these same elements, while at times convoluted, can give Quidditch a bit more depth than your standard get the ball into X type of game. Overall, I think the developers did their best striking a balance between being faithful to the source material and having a fun dynamic sports game. There was also a two player versus mode, and I think this is where you can have the most fun with the game, especially if you're playing with a friend who understands the rules and nuance of Quidditch. Now, so far I've been talking about the PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube, and PC version of the game, but there was also a version released for the Game Boy Advance, and this one is very similar. You start with the tutorials, then the Hogwarts Cup, and then the World Cup. It has all the same teams as the console version, and the controls slash gameplay are as close as they can be on the Game Boy. Although, I always felt the pacing on this one was just a touch too slow. And so, there we have it, Quidditch World Cup. A great little detour from Hogwarts into the world of wizard sport, but is it the best Harry Potter game? Well, this is a tough one to call because we're not exactly comparing mandrakes to mandrakes here, are we? Is it better than the Quidditch segments in the movie games? Absolutely by a mile, but the movie games were so much more than just Quidditch. I would say that Quidditch World Cup's design, gameplay, and art style are on par with the best of the movie games, but they're still vastly different. It's like asking which Mario game do you think is better, Sunshine or Double Dash? Both are great in their own way. Maybe this is one for the community to decide. Do you think Quidditch World Cup is the best Harry Potter game? Leave a comment below with your take. As always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and follow me on Twitter. See you next time.